Hey, sorry I was looking at my phone instead of looking at you or looking at there. Or looking Marriage there. Monday. Marriage <clears throat> Mondays, here we are. Woohoo! I'm going to get all the little video in here so I can see who's joining us. All right, well, last week we um, told you that we were going to talk about uh, uh, some things that we had on our heart this week, and we have the, a new one uh, celebrating our differences. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We've talked about this a lot over the years, not to tolerate one another, but learn that the difference is important, that if we're both alike, one of us is unimportant, so. Well, we we did we do a teaching, male, female, what a difference, mm -hmm. and then we have um, one in our book, we also have that, <clears throat> we have the, the difference between male and female. God created us different uh, for a purpose. He created us male, he created us female, and, he created us both in his likeness, in his kind, in, in his image, and gave us complete authority right. over the birds of the air, the tame beast. And so um, the way that we've always taught it is that <clears throat> um, God created Adam, and then he created the, the female, and he created Adam and gave some attributes to Adam, and then... He said, it's not good that man should be alone. And then he created Eve mm. and he, mm. well, okay. I know say, you're going to talk about the other Adam. Well, all no, right? no, I just, I just think we have to say it right because it's been taught wrong so long that when male and female were created, they were created in one body in Genesis 1. I was going to let you say, and he took out of him. He separated. And, and so my point was coming up, if I could have finished that okay, little thought. Okay, well, I didn't want you to get too far with the wrong When idea. God created the male, he, he had already dealt with Satan in wanting to have all the attributes of God. So, so he, he divided us. But he also gave us a way to be joined together. Mm -hmm. He made us one by design, but knew that there wasn't any power in that. Just like there, we were already inside of, of him. And so he sent us to the earth because there was no, he didn't want us to love him by design. He wanted us to love him by choice. So two so became he, one. It's a great mystery. He separated one into two and then gave us a choice to operate to become one again. And so the way we teach it is that I have attributes about me that come from the Lord. You have mm -hmm. attributes that come from the We're Lord. We're both like our father. It, but if we had all the attributes in one male or one female, Satan said, I want to not be like God. I want to be God. Mm -hmm. And so God did not give man that opportunity. He said, before you get too big for your britches, I'm going to separate you, but um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come back together. And even though that God is God, He is even trying. Now, did I say that for you the right way? If you close enough, came, came back very, around for very you. Very close. You, when you say God created male, He didn't. He created man, mankind. That's what male I said. He said He female. created mankind in right. His image. And then He separated us. And then the Holy Spirit is like the feminine side of God. So just as God and the Holy Spirit need Jesus. You and I, with both attributes of God, you more of the Father and me more of the Holy Spirit, then we need Jesus in our triune also. So my point on that is that, <coughs> that I have attributes of the Father, you have attributes mm -hmm. of the Father, and um, then we have what we like to call natural um, differences. Right, the things that, uh, that can rub one another the wrong way, or... Uh, or or can complete one another because see that that, that pe people people say that say well you know he rubs me the wrong way he's so different well but it's the differences that make us unique when we come together that's right that that's the word helpmate uh the helpmate is his other sight his other side his other view so without her the male alone not mankind but male alone only has half the picture his other sight his other side, his other view. So I give you the full picture. You give me the full picture. Without each other, we only have half the picture. Agree? Yeah. Yeah. Right? You see, you see what I said in the beginning, if you go back and, re and listen. You're going exactly, to you say God ex created male. Man, and that no, was he wrong. said he created mankind. Yes, he did. It, then he created, you would say, <laughs> Both atoms is mm -hmm. what you say. Genesis, and and I didn't want to confuse the people because normally when you say that, people go, huh? Well, Genesis 5 verse 1 says, 
He made men. He named. He created mankind, and he named them both Adam. And when Why? we have more time to explain it, then. Right. But when you say that, people go, "Huh?" He named them both Adam because they were in one body. So why would you need more than one name? See. I hear the guys out there going right over my head. Right we were now. in one body, male and female, and there was no power of agreement in that because we were agree- we were one by design. And so he reached into the fire of man. Of mankind. And pulled out. The feminine half and, and left the male half. And so then he gave us an opportunity. He said when, when um a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. He finds his other half. He finds a good thing. That's right. Because the Bible says that no man ever hated himself. That's right, but loved and cherished. And so we are, we are, what I would say is when I look in the mirror, I see you. You look in the mirror, you see me. We're mirror reflections of one another right. when we come together as one. Right. How do you do that? It's a mystery, the Bible says. It's a mystery, Ephesians tells us it's a mystery. It can't it's not logical. If it were logical everybody'd understand it. Or now we go into it. that more in depth when we do one of our marriage. The uh, in depth is in yeah. to becoming one. And, and, I, and I just want to skim chapter. over it, but see, I, I give you the on top of the yeah, water. Yeah, well, you and can you, miss the point. There's nothing, <laughs> nobody missed the point. They then you yes. just dove straight down you to the bottom of the say drain of the that pool. He created male. He created mankind. I said he created mankind and he gave them his authority created him in his likeness. That's right, in his image. Yes. That's right. And that's then, what I said. That's when it says that he put to full the woman out of the fire of mankind. Then it says that he formed her. He didn't have to create her because she was already created. He formed her then because she was separated and needed a form. So, um, if you have any questions concerning that, write her. Don't write me. Because, <laughs> Just read the book. Order the book. It's a great Christmas gift. Wonderful stocking stuffer. <laughs> Two becoming one. <laughs> the bottom line is he created and then <laughs> he created male and female. We're there. Woo! And so he gave us an opportunity, male and female, to come together, to walk in unity, to, to walk in like agreement. You. And when we do that and we walk in agreement, there he is. We are a completed picture because Jesus walked this earth as a, as a, as God incarnate, but he was not married. He didn't need to be married. He had the Holy Spirit. So when we, as a married couple, come together in unity, we look the most like Jesus mm-hmm. when on the earth. Right, our other agreement people. brings Jesus on the scene. So now we're triune, male, female, and Jesus makes us triune. No, I know that's probably going to over something. No, I don't believe that. But, I believe you are deep enough to get that. But um, so, so and, it, and Jesus didn't need a wife because he had the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the feminine side of God. So he had the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Spirit. Remember when he came up out of the water and, and the Holy Spirit came down upon him and stayed with him from that point? He was he had his other side, his other side, his other view. He had the helpmate that we are given through the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, um, celebrate your differences in this little book I've got. It says, extrovert or introvert? Extrovert loves crowds, while introverts would rather spend time in solitude with a close friend. Extroverts are energized by people, and introverts are worn out by people. Mm. What do you think you are? Both. (laughs) (laughs) I am an extrovert. You can't can't be both. If the crowd is in the audience and I'm on the platform. (laughs) You can't can't be both. But I don't like crowds that are... I don't like... I don't like so once games, again, I'm not necessary. <laughs> you just, right? See? I'm just saying. You went totally against everything <laughs> that you just spent 10 minutes jibber-jabbering about. I'm just saying as I get older, I am less of an extrovert than I used to be because the only way I like crowds is if I'm on the platform and they're in the audience. I don't like being inside of a crowd. It's I, not happy for me. There anymore. is no way you're an introvert. No, you're right. I do like There's people. There's no way you're an introvert. I'm more of an introvert. Yes, you are. But I don't think either one of us uh, are that to an extreme. No. We both like our downtime, but we both like being with people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and are energized by yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're kind of... All right. So, um, and here's one I like. There are leapers and there are lookers. Mm-hmm. Leapers take risks when they see an opportunity, when they want to jump on it before it's too late. Lookers are more cautious. They like to carefully check everything out before making a decision. Leaper. 
Definitely a leaper. Looker. I'm like, you'll figure it out later. Just pull the trigger. Looker. <laughs> Looker. And that's my biggest flaw is like, You uh, never pull the trigger. Uh, no, it takes me a year to buy a TV. Oh, it takes you a year to do anything. <laughs> that's, that, that's not fair. It is true, are you though. Kid, are you kidding it me right here? It is so very here? true. Okay, by the way. Uh, when, I, when, when I start a project in the house, I, I remodel our bedroom. You go to a women's thing on a Thursday, and, and by and Sunday done. night, drapes, carpet, I paint, mean, Absolutely. Done. You take care. A you year? Are, you are project-minded, but when well, it comes to making a decision that you need to think through, it takes you a long time. Well, it doesn't take me a year, but I, I'm, I am, I'm, like it says, I'm, I'm a looker. It, it's the difference is with us getting out of bed. Oh, I leap out of bed and you, fall up against the alarm wall. Alarm goes off and bam, <laughs> she just leaps out. I mean, I, and it, fall up into the wall. Yeah. I mean, I get up so when, fast. When, <laughs> when she when she was uh, dealing with uh, the, the 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 cancer uh, and her blood pressure was so low, <laughs> she'd leap out of bed and bam, she fall to the floor. I'm like, you can't do this. I you can't do leaping. this. Like, now I roll a little so, bit because yeah. I don't want to fall into the I, wall. I like to wake up and then gradually get out of bed. You just like that and I like, do I like to start so, my day and that's your nature it is my nature and so. and we've learned to like that about each other instead of uh, no. in the beginning I, I think we just and you just alarm go <laughs> 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 God vaporized that's true <laughs> so you would like it if I would hang around so wonder you don't have the coffee pot <laughs> next to the bed and you grab it on the way out no, like, it's true um, I, I do everything in a big hurry that is but now sure. that that's that's a difference in people and some mm -hmm. people you know that might be a point of contention um, <laughs> outliner or detailer there we go right there yeah we started this whole thing off I'm giving the outline and you're going, eh, details, details, details. You should details. have been a dentist. Just really. <laughs> I don't want you to miss the point. <laughs> they didn't miss the point. Did you miss the point? No. No, because I gave it to you. <laughs> okay. Um, outliners have general focus and they look on the big picture. They think of term and directions and getting things done. That's me. That's you. Detailers look at the nuts and bolts. Their, con their concern is how to get the things done. Now, mm -hmm. there, but now that that doesn't That's encompass everything. And my That's plan, your, and I gotta have a big plan. Gotta make a big list. But but I hate but there's only one way to do it, and it's the right way. That's the way. That's the so that's the that's the detail that I like to do it the right way. He, your Harry's personality, if you take the test, is melancholy, and that the bottom line to that is he everything is do it the right way. I'm a choleric. Do it my way. My way is the right way. I wouldn't choose it if it wasn't the right way. So Take a test. I'd flunk a blood <laughs> test. Okay, so <laughs> come on. I mean, there's four personality types, basically. Melancholy, do it the right way. Choleric, do it my way. And then there is the, uh, what's the other one? Phlegmatic, do it the easy way. And then there's the one who likes to have fun. That would be the sanguine, uh, do it the fun way. So it's the right way, sanguine, the fun way, choleric, my way, and uh, phlegmatic, the easy way. But, so which one are you? Yeah, so if you're out there, think about that. Are you an extrovert, introvert? Is your mate? Are you a leaper? Are you a looker? Are you an outliner? Are you a detail? And this is not saying one is bad or one is good. They're just saying that these, in general terms, mm -hmm. are, are personality traits. Uh, a spender or a saver? Both savers, thank God. If spenders have extra money, they want to spend it on themselves and on others, on worthy causes or anything. If savers have extra money, they want to put it away for a rainy day. They do not like to spend unless it's very important. Well, <clears throat> I would be more of a spender in the sense of when we married, it didn't matter how much money I made, I gave it away. So uh, you taught me the value of God blessing the storehouse. If you don't have a storehouse, how can you bless it? So you're a great giver too, one of the best givers I know, but you also understand the value of saving and having at least three months of money put aside if you need to run. Well, that's, your... that's the minimum. I mean, I always say that you should put up for a rainy day. That's I, I just don't live moment to moment I, I that that's just mm -hmm. that's it goes again see that's a personality trait right. okay right and now you you believe god every morning and and right. and, and, and i'm i'm He'll grateful for supply. that yeah 
Yeah. He'll always supply no matter what. It doesn't matter to me what life is going on. It's bad, good, indifferent. If everything's going great or everything's going horrible, God will always supply. Because I'm a tither, we're tithers, and I believe we have rights because of that. So no matter what's going on around us, God never changes. He is the Lord. He changes not. I think I'll do five tonight. Maybe we'll save five for next week. Oh, great, because we've got so tons see. of people with us, and I want to acknowledge okay. them. Here's another one. Planner or flexor? Planners love structure with everything organized and neatly packaged. They like schedules and deadlines. Flexors bend with the flow of life and take things as they come. They tend to be spontaneous and laid back. Loose ends don't bother them because they believe everything will work out. I am definitely not that last one. <laughs> I, 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 only my faith girl believes everything will work out, but I want to plan. I want the details. I uh, read it. Read it again. And a planner or flexor. Planners love structure and everything organized and neatly packaged. Oh, about I know. that about you. Well, I've, cha- I've grown up some and I've changed some, and that's the your thing. Your desk is a mess. It is. They but like I know schedules every and pile. deadlines. I like schedules and deadlines. You know, flexors do. bend with the flow of life and mm-hmm. take things as they come. Yeah, I can be more like that. You are that way. And they tend to be spontaneous. Remember, I, you I told way. you you need to be more spontaneous. I said I would write it on the calendar. No, next you said Tuesday. I plan to do that. <laughs> I'll write it on the calendar next mm-hmm. Tuesday. I'll be spontaneous. <laughs> loose ends don't bother them because believing everything will work out. No, I, oh, I, oh, loose ends yeah, I, bother both of us. Yeah, yeah we yeah, neither one of us yeah. like to leave anything yeah. undone. If we can get it done today, we will not put it off till tomorrow. Yeah. There's no procrastination yeah. in either one of us. Yeah, so it's for sure. It's for sure. Let me tell you who all's with us tonight. Colby and Morgan are here. Danielle, Crystal, Krista, and Spencer are with us. Tammy is with us. We're praying for Mario, believing God for him. Rhonda and probably Kevin is with us. Debbie and Richard are here from Oklahoma. Sherry and Franklin are here from Burbank. Uh, Tish Junker is with us, praying for you, Tish. Tammy and uh, Roger are here with us. And uh, Charlie Ellis, I hope Ginger's with you. Laura Kokenauer is with us. Natalie Morales is Jose there. Uh, Dean and Julie are here. Uh, The Ellies are here with us tonight. Um, uh, so Basically, many of you have Mondays. been writing us about coming out of this COVID thing, and that we mentioned some of the names. We just pray and hope that you all are feeling better. We do. Amen. Um, we've been praying for you. And, you know, I read today that uh, somewhere where it said there's possibility they're going to shut New York down again. I don't know. Um, as I said before, there's just no direction from uh, uh, our government that is in a in a, a way that everybody can understand it. It's just scattered every way, hit and miss. And so I, 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 I don't know, but I, I just know that um, we've been praying for people that it seems like we're knowing more and more people that have been dealing with this. Mm-hmm. It does seem and, like more and, and more. Uh, but we we've won't heard, call out names, but we but just we've pray. But we've had some good reports, too. Yes, yes. We've had some really yes, good reports yes, of people getting through yes, it and back out of it and, yes. and over it. Laura and Kevin Schaefer are with us. Jen, uh, Jennifer and Brandon are here. Savannah is with us. Mwah, Kevin Savannah and Laura, Anderson. you guys should, you should, you should tell us where you are on these, the differences. Extrovert, introvert, leaper, looker, outliner, detailer, Splendor, spender, saver, planner, or flexor. Let's start with <clears throat> extrovert and introvert. Tell us which one are you and which one is your mate. Jeanette and and uh, Mark Burnett are hey guys, with us. A lot of y'all from it. Michigan. And a lot of us, uh, we know you, so we would guess one thing, but you know, you might be different. Miss Kathy is with us. Ruth and Scott Thompson are with us. Um, uh, I'm looking here. Everybody's making comments about how funny we are tonight. Oh, Tammy says you are both extroverts, no matter what you want to believe. You are both extroverts, that's for sure. Uh, DJ is with us. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't leave anybody out. Oh, got somebody new. Um, Let's see. I'm looking, looking, looking. I don't know that name. Tell me your name, and I'll call you by your first name. Okay, good. If you want. Yeah, if you want me to. Good, good. All right, good. All is well. 
All is well. We got a ton of people with us. Uh, Ruth said Scott is such a planner. Oh yes. Now if I was, <laughs> I, I would tell you that. And Jeanette, I think you're a planner. Mark, I would say that about Jeanette. Although I know Mark with the roofing business, he probably plans the jobs, but I'd say Jeanette's a planner. Mm -hmm, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott is such a planner. The Lord gave me the word creative organizer, which helped in celebrating one of our differences. Yay. And the Lord does help you. He gives you ways. And as I said, 35 years of marriage, we've not only in the beginning, the things that might have bothered us now, we really celebrate and love. I'm really thankful for the things that I am not that he is. But you know, the, the, the thing about that is, is that, that you might be a planner in, 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 in one in area, area of flexibility because you go in my closet and everything's in order. You go mm -hmm. in your closet. Yeah. You can't hardly walk in there. No. Mm -mm, you can't because I got 14 projects going at once and that shows you that that is that I am a huge starter and God has to help me be a finisher uh, um, which she said it which helped us we balance each other in so many ways and then um, Laura Schaefer says Kevin introvert Laura extrovert Unless I'm allowed to be an introverted extrovert, she said if that's a thing an introverted I would say, extrovert I would say, I would say Kevin's a planner yeah. And I think Laura is flexible. But that's I don't know. True. That's just kind of... Oh, Terry and Kevin Lowry are with us. Tell us, what which one are you? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Um, the Ellie's Gabby says, I'm an introvert. My husband, Chris, is an extrovert. You'll find that a lot of times you'll marry the one who's not like you on purpose. Uh, sometimes I don't think we do it as much as on purpose, but as we are together longer, we're really thankful. Really thankful. Jennifer Clark says, uh, Tim is definitely an extrovert, and I am naturally introverted, but I can do people when I need to. That's right. And a lot of it is learned. Mm -hmm. uh, learn behavior with the Holy Ghost. Um, Jennifer says, I'm an introvert, and um, Brandon, extrovert for sure. Yeah, I was even walking on the road, and Brandon was riding by in his truck, and he stopped, rolled down the window. That's an extrovert. An introvert would just keep on driving. And see, I think I've changed uh, in these years because I thought yeah. I'm more of an introvert when we first got married. You were, so, but, but you have changed tremendously. I was 100% extrovert. And I have changed some, too. I, you call me a hermit now. Yeah. You know, so we do change as we get old, older. Debbie said our closets look the same as y'all's. <laughs> well, that's, go, why, Richard. that's why you and I work well together, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> Mario is an introvert, and I'm an extrovert, Tammy said. So it, it is interesting how God puts us together like that, isn't it? How about leaper or looker? Leapers take risk, and lookers are cautious. Mm, so leaper or looker? I am the risk taker for sure. Yeah. The trigger, I call it the trigger puller, and it's it's kind of a easy when you are walking with God in faith too, because walking by faith is like a risk taking. Mm. It is to walk by faith and not by sight. It is like a risk taker. So our personality can help us feel like we're more in faith. Sometimes. See now, I, I would say I was more of a leaper. When I was younger, but not, but as not you know. now because I'm I'm the one that's got to, you know, hold down the fort. Mm, when you 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 think way in advance and make every decision today based upon the future, yeah. which part of that's just wisdom too. Mm. Yeah, so sometimes Leaper. it's hard to tell the difference. Yeah, so lookers are cautious. And leapers take risks. And I oh. wish I could do more of the take risk thing. Uh, what we, but the more you do it, uh, the better you get at it. But you are cautious. You are learning to be a cautious leaper. In other words, you'll walk by faith for sure, but you're still mm -hmm. going to be cautious about it. Mm. And I probably never will be. Uh, Jennifer said, I'm definitely the looker. And Tim agrees. He has to push me out of the way when he leaves. <laughs> Absolutely. Laura said, Kevin, leaper always. And I'm with you, Harry. I look all the way. <laughs> yeah, Ruth says, uh, lookers, then leapers. Oh, okay. They look because they're both introverts, too. They're lookers, and then they leap. They walk by faith. Rhonda says, we are both introverts here, both Kevin and Rhonda. And uh, Terry says, Kevin's an introvert. And Terry Lowry says, I'm an extrovert. Um, Caleb says... He can be both, and Sarah, Sarah says, I am an extrovert. I would say Caleb is an extrovert, too. But how about, how about um, uh, um, the, uh, the Perrys? 
they're, they're two oh, Sherry and Sherry Franklin, Franklin, which are you? Yeah. I'd like to know what you think about that. Are you extroverts? Are you introverts? Uh, are you lookers? Are you leapers? Give us another one. Oh, here she is. Sherry says right now, we are both extroverts. And as we get older, we're learning to be a little introvert. That That's nice. Yeah, I would say that's my thing too. I'm certainly happy with people, but I enjoy my private time. I do, and I used to and not. Dean and Julie both are on the platform worshiping, so would they be introverts or extroverts? Well, you're, I think they're with us. So, they are. Uh, Dean and Julie, which are you? Are you introverted or extroverted? Uh, Sherry said Franklin's a leaper, and uh, uh, Sherry says, first I'm a looker, and then I'm a leaper. So that's like, uh, that's yeah. just, you learn to do that with yeah. the Lord. When you walk with the Lord, you, you develop uh, God told me years and years ago, he said, you, you are a Proverbs 31 woman. Every part of her is in you, but the parts you don't want to develop, you just pretend like aren't there. Like I, I yeah. di didn't want to be smart in business. I just said, let me preach the word. Somebody else can do that. All right. And the Lord said, no. So if we take these five, there's five more we'll do next week. But if we take these five, they could also cause conflict or a point of contention with people. Well, if you don't have grace for one another. Well, wait a minute. Now, not even the grace for one another. Let's say that you're just young and newly married and all, and it just you rubbed you the wrong way. Well, we've been married for 35 years, so we definitely rubbed each other the wrong way when we first got married. Anybody who's been married a long time say you Until changed. you figure these out. Until you figure them out, that it's a good thing that we're different. It's so, I mean, how can iron sharpen iron unless it's rubbing up against each other? So sometimes we are okay. sharpening so, on each other. So, for example, um, when we were doing the We You Worship, uh, I would just beg you, please don't show up until you hit the platform. Right, because... You got in the wrong lane. I would stay in everybody's lane. And, everybody's and, lane. And that was a point of contention, and so... Yeah, I because just said, I don't like loose ends, I want everything done, there, so I, I couldn't keep my hand. But up. you can't. You, it, it it has to be done in an orderly fashion. Right. And once yeah. you stepped in and started running things, then I could stay, and and just stay in the closet and stay anointed. Because if you'd have walked in that morning when when they were supposed to start at eight o'clock and the building was still a mess from the night before and they didn't get started at eleven o'clock, mm -hmm. you'd have gone. You you'd. I'd have been ballistic. You'd have, you'd I would just. Have. You, you, you wouldn't have been beside yourself. And I'd have lose the anointing. And did I ever tell you? No, no. never. No. And and I would lose the anointing over that. And that's what you would about protecting the anointing, keeping me from seeing things I don't need to see or knowing things I don't need to know. So we've learned how to um, adapt to each other's um, characteristics. Yeah. G uh, Dean says, uh, Julie says, Julie is an extrovert and Dean an introvert. We have crossed over some, though. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. You kind of cross over some. Yeah, I just said Dean was an introvert, but mm -hmm. you work at uh, JPL, so mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and and really Julie works in the industry, so yeah. she she's definitely yeah. an extrovert. And if you know them for five seconds, you know that spender or saver. That's one that. Now that would be a point of contention in some of your homes right now. If because, you're not careful. Yeah. We are both savers. And, um, but we do make a decision to save so that we can spend it at one time. Mm -hmm. we so both we spend do it spend. It's not mm -hmm. like we. But we don't frivolously spend. That's I something the Lord told me a couple of years ago was when, you know, we, I, I was getting ready to turn 60. You'd already turned 60. And we're like, okay, what are we going to do financially for the next few years? And you started planning. And I started planning. And I thought, well, maybe. You know, will we have enough money and da 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 da, da, da and things like that? And the you Lord start thinking about how old I'm going to be because I'm never going to die. But 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 no, that was that was <laughs> crossed my mind. But the Lord told me, he said, be careful that you don't get a poverty mentality. Worrying. Yeah, that so so you can be a saver and might have a poverty mm -hmm. mentality. That's mm -hmm. that and miserly. That's where, this Bible calls it. Don't have a miser spirit where you hold on to things. Well, I didn't say miserly because I don't like that word. I know, but it's poverty mentality. But yeah, poverty mentality is where you. Um, no matter how much you have, yeah. you can never have enough. Yeah, that's different than. Mm -hmm. And so the, I had to be real careful about that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's never crossed my mind. I, I've never, ever in my life had a poverty mentality. And that's where we're different. because. And I'm also not much of a planner in that area. 
but I am a saver. I like to save and then pay cash for something right. because I was raised that way. So we there's don't a like saving that. to spend. Right. A so that's why I said a little bit. We're savers to the point where we want to spend it. Mm-hmm. So. Right. We yeah. are definitely that way. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you? Are are you savers or are you spenders? Uh, but again, go to the risk taker, the trigger puller, as I call it. I, I am you mean looker or leaper. A looker or leaper. Uh, in that sense, when it comes to buying something, if we have the money and we need it, I will make a quick decision on something, and you will make a slow decision. Well, for example, you will look. Um, we needed a piece of equipment for the office a while back, mm-hmm. and it broke down again, and you got frustrated. And said, I just need this piece of equipment. And I said, well, tell me about it. And you had it all. It was like $2,000. And I said, well, just give me a little bit. And I began to research it. And, and I had to leave the office. And it, two or three hours later, I found it. Exactly. Where we exact could piece. The exact piece we needed where we could trade the old one in mm-hmm. and get the new one. And I think we did it for like four hundred dollars mm-hmm. difference. You did. And, so, and that's the difference. I would have paid the high price simply because I don't have that... I don't like to do all that research, but he's so good at that. And I am so thankful for that difference in us. But but my point on that is is that we had to, to, to get to that point in our life. Mm-hmm. We did. We did, and, and learn to celebrate that in each other. Uh, I, I just know that is a weakness of mine, so I will always present something to you like that and let you do what you're, I call See, it. I don't like that miserly so, word. I, I like the word thrifty, to be thrifty. Well, thrifty is different than and miserly. And the Bible says we'd be good stewards of the money God gives us. And all that's right, but that's not the same word as miser. The miser word is the one who no matter how much he has, it's never enough. That's not the same as thrifty. Uh, uh, yeah, that's why I said I don't like that word miser. Well, you because you, you don't like the whole meaning of it no the one who can't have enough um ruth says we're savers and givers pamela smith is with us she said same here on recharging in solitude laura kokenauer said that caleb and i are just alike Uh, we recharge in solitude and i think that's what i do i recharge so i can jump out there and be with people again uh jennifer says we're both savers i am more of the shopper though well, that's good. Lynette Rogers is with us. Uh, she said, this is good. Thank you. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> good, good, good. Caleb says he recharges in solitude. I recharge being around people. And that's true. Some people... How about Colby and Morgan? How about that, Colby and Morgan? We'd like to hear from Introvert, you. Introvert, extrovert. Leaper? Or looker. Looker. Uh, I, I almost know those, but I'd like to know what, what you would say. Savannah says, uh, does being a planning type... Uh, of spender be okay when it comes to the tithe hmm Re- say that again. rephrase that i'm not sure what you mean by that does being a planning type of spender be okay when it comes to the tithe the tithe's right off the top it's not even thought about as well you a, can't answer the question because you don't understand yeah the re- re-ask the question savannah so i make sure i uh, does being a planning type of spender be okay when it comes to the tithe? i'm a planning type of spender I plan how much I'm going to spend later. That's really good, mm-hmm. Savannah. That's and really see, good. And see, now, something that we sometimes do also, because um, we'll save up our tithe. Well, we have to, we, yeah. No, we'll save up our tithe for, like, when we know someone's doing, like, a Christmas project. Mm-hmm. We'll say, okay, we're going to send this for that specific. Right. So, you know, we tithe, but we save maybe our tithe for a, a project. And then we give offerings on top of that. But we do that with some sort we want to gather our tithes together for that specific thing. And that's because, in our case, we don't have the local church that we support as, as evangelists. Wherever we go, we give our tithe every week. So we save up sometimes extra. But don't don't misconstrue that. We right. give to the local church. But right. where we say that you tithe to where you're fed, and every Sunday when we're up ministering, we tithe where we're fed. To that. Mm, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. So uh, Pamela says, what about free spirits and nerds? <laughs> I love it. Now, are those differences? Free spirits and nerds? <laughs> Let's see. That's not in my list here, Pamela. <laughs> So I don't know what list you're looking Woo! at there, darling. So good. Free spirits and nerds. Well, uh, Laura says that Kevin says he's not a spender. He's an investor. Very good point. 
Very good point. An investment always has a return. That's like a seed planter. So spending and seed planting is different. Spending on where you're not going to get a return is one thing. Spending and planting is a whole different thing. That's investment, yes. We teach that when people say, you know how much my kid's school cost me. Well, they don't cost you. It's an investment it's because an investment you want a return kids. on that. Right. And so that's a good word, Kevin. You invest in things that will give you a long-term re- return. Absolutely. And that's a good word. And, but, you know, there are things that you do have to spend on. I mean, like... Uh, um, you know, when, when, um, uh, our water heater went out, mm-hmm. you know, you have to spend to get a water heater, but then you, you get the good one because then it's a long-term right. investment. So, and then that spurred you to look for, uh, home what, warranty. a home warranty because had we had a home warranty, it would have been a whole different story. Mm-hmm. And then that changed everything. Uh, Kobe says, that they are both introverts, both lookers, both savers, and smart spenders. And I believe that. I believe you guys are all of that. Jeanette and Mark say, I'm an extrovert, and Mark is an introvert. Uh, That's why you love to fish so much, Mark. You like to get alone in the boat. Be alone, away from people. <laughs> yeah, but then when he is at church and he's operating in the, the helps ministry there, you know, well, I know he's quiet, but yeah. Uh, mm. That's what I enjoy about him. Savannah uh, qualified her question. She said, so sorry, I should have read that before. When it comes to tithing, do you plan before how much you're going to tithe or should you wait? Well, the tithe is 10% of the whole of your income. But the offering, yes, we plan ahead. And we always agree on every seed we plant, including the tithe. But we just said we do plan sometimes on our tithe. Right. It's not that we're holding it back, but we'll right. put it in our tithe account, account mm-hmm. to give uh, when we know like the, 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 the coats for children or the right. Christmas things or specific things that we know we'd like to really invest in. Right. You know, it has our heart. We know it's coming. Yes. Right. Yes. So Special pa- projects. And so, um, you know, and then we give offerings on top of that for those special projects. We try and, you know, so yes. Lars, Lars Schaefer said, for the record, Kevin also gets five times more Amazon packages than I do. So he's also a spender, she said. <laughs> naughty, naughty, don't tell on him. Somebody <laughs> has to run the place, right, oh, Kevin? That's right. Somebody so. has to run the place, that's yeah. for sure. Um, Pamela says, nerds are so buried in planning that the free spirit can't breathe. But nerds need free spirits to so they have a life. We talked about that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, we it's, talked about It's you. very true. Yeah. You plan that so long. Yeah. Like, come on. Honey. Yeah, and, and I need a free spirit uh, in my life. Otherwise, I would never leave the office or never stop uh, editing a book or never stop writing a book until I'm to the end of it because I bury myself in and Harry will say, okay, that's enough for today. Step out. And you'll even do that if I get deep into a revelation of the word. You're like, okay, that's enough of that. Come out of there. Let's go take a walk. Mm-hmm. And because and I am the nerd in this relationship. That is exactly true. Uh, the free spirit um, is much. Harry is much more the free spirit in that way. Spontaneous, uh, much much more fun than I've learned to be more fun. But it is. I learned to be fun. I had to. You don't I learn had to be to. fun. You just have fun. I did. A, I <laughs> had to I, learn. I went to college and I took a class. <laughs> Learning how, how to, to have, have fun. more fun. Do y'all, y'all understand where I'm yes, coming from? Yes, spontaneous. Oh I wasn't spontaneous. God. People who have fun are spontaneous. Learn to have fun. I had. I will put that on my calendar for next Tuesday. I will okay. learn to have more fun. <laughs> I am very serious when it comes to things. You are right. You're right about that. Okay, let's change the subject. Sarah Kokenauer says we are You don't even listen to what you just said. I've learned that. Everybody who knows me knows I have to learn to have fun. Ask Judy O'Leary. Look at my gray hair. Oh my gosh. So Sarah Kokenauer says we are both givers. We both can save, but I'm probably more the spender. I do most of the shopping for the family. Harry does that too. So it would look like he's a spender, but it's because he is the shopper for the family. Well, he, we wouldn't have any envelopes no. if I didn't buy the envelopes for you to send out 
anything, no. stamps, anything. No, he does all of that. And even to our Christmas presents, he's the one that's typing in the addresses and sending them out, and, and I get all the thanks. Hey, that's the way it is. Um, so uh, Caleb is good at budgeting and saving. Jeanette said, I'm a leaper for sure, and Mark is like Harry and takes time to evaluate all the angles. A looker for sure. Um, Kevin and Rhonda are both givers too, Sarah said. Yes, you are very big givers. Uh, Kevin, just on his own, without us even knowing, built the shell for our sound machine that we that I have in my heart. And he's just built the shell for us. I mean, just, oh. yeah, you haven't even seen it. I'll show you the picture. And then Pastor Dave said he's going to help uh, Laura, and they're going to wire it and put the sound in it. And once we get the prototype... Then we can get a patent. So thank you all so much for doing that because I would never get it finished if you didn't. Um, what do you mean it, you'd never get it finished? I would never get they're it finished. They're getting it finished. I would never get it finished. See, they're doing they're it. They're doing they're it. it. Welcome to my world. <laughs> because that's Harry's world. Welcome to my world. I come up with the idea, where do you think the, the concept, the where details, do you think the dinner came and from? the plan. <laughs> I go to the grocery store. I bring the I groceries. I did at least home. cook today. That is a miracle. I stopped in the middle of editing yeah, my new book, yeah, and I cooked dinner. Yeah. Miracle of all miracles. Yeah, yeah. So Ellie says the, I'm... Um, the Gab kitchen appliances said, What? <laughs> what? Who is this? Gabby said, I'm the spender on household needs. Chris is the saver until he gets a bonus check. Ah, oh, that's good. Now, see, that's an interesting too, thing, too, the bonus checks. Those are... Those are surprises. And, you know, th those are things that you, when you get a bonus, I like to call those happies. They are. They are happies. Gifts and surprises. <laughs> they, are, they are happies. When, when Harry and I teach uh, Male, Female, What a Difference, and we teach on the differences, one of my favorites is I say men are like oranges and women are like onions. We have lots of layers, and uh, we can be healed. The Lord can heal us, but it might take a year for our soul to get peeled all the way down to the last tear, to the last time we stop crying about it. But men, they're oranges. One good peeling, and you're down to the core of their problem, and they're over it. So that's a difference that I wish, and I have tried, and I look to you, and I try to be more like but that. But I don't know if you could say that. I guess that's a male-female trait, but sometimes we say that, and people that's say it's a personality trait. Too, yeah, so. that might be a personality thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Because I definitely get over things quickly. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. But sometimes my emotion, I may cry about it for a long time, even though I know I'm healed. I know God's touched me and, I, and I'm healed. But I might, every time I think about it, I might cry about it for a while. So we're definitely different like that. Um, men are logical by nature, and women are illogical by nature. We can be logical, but we can also be more illogical than a man. I find that to be. Now, if you say that that's really not true, think about many of the stories in the Bible so many of the things that Jesus did and he got the women to support him in doing it. Yeah. it, it no wonder he had the women that were backing him oh, yeah. than, more than the men because, I mean, illogical, go and take mud and spit in the mud and put it on your eye. I mean, you know, yeah. that, that's, I would sit there going. Most men would do just you, what that man did. And are said, you uh -uh. kidding me? Uh-uh. Yeah. Yes, but you're right. Uh, Luke chapter 8 outlines the fact that Jesus traveled with many women and that were his sole financial support. And I assume they went and got the crowds because I can't imagine those 12 disciples. I mean, on John chapter 4, they went into Samaria, came back with lunch. Well, think about the woman goes into Samaria, comes back with the whole town. So they needed women to get the crowds. Well, I think about the woman with the issue of blood. She made it through the whole crowd to get mm -hmm. healed. And nothing was going to stop her. And she wasn't supposed to be out. So that was not a logical decision for Theological. her to be out unclean. Mm -hmm. Right um, in that same story, Jairus had come to get Jesus to, to heal his mm -hmm. daughter. And when he gets a bad report. He got a bad word. And the man said, don't bother the master anymore. And he turned around. Like he was going to leave, like he was done. Yeah. And Jesus said, only believe, simply believe that yeah. I'm able to do this. Yeah. So that just shows you the difference, too. I mean, women will stay on a task like a dog with a bone. I mean, they're going to stay on it until they get it finished. And that, that is something about a woman, especially when you're talking about faith.
Well, That's I always say to my life. wife, she's not going to knock on the door. If she's got to get through, she's going to kick the door down. I'll knock it down. She's going to get down. Because so. I'm going to get in yeah. if I'm supposed to, if yeah. I feel like God's yeah. asked me to. Another big difference between male and female that we have discovered, it's definitely in our lives, our women are like computers and men are like file cabinets. Uh, I will work up, work it, work it, work it, think about it, talk about it, talk, 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 talk about it. And he's just like, I'll deal with that if I have to. I may not, it may not even ever come up, just file it away. and File it away until I have to deal with it. Mm. And dealing with it at 10 o'clock at night. It's not the time. Not the time for me. And that's why I used to say I have to stay out of your file drawers. Because if I start opening your file drawers and start working a problem, and usually a woman will work a problem long before it even is a problem. And so when I, I say I, it's... In case a scenario. So a woman has a computer, she has all that memory. Don't ever think she forgets a thing. <laughs> she don't forget we don't. nothing. We do not, especially if you made a mistake or gave the wrong thing or... Are y'all like that? I mean, uh, file cabinet and, and file it away. It does want to deal with it until it has to deal with it. Or, or is so. that the man in your life or is that the woman? In our life, definitely, I am the computer working the situation, working the, 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 the scenario. How much time do That may or time? may not come up. Have? We're at 45. Ooh. Yeah, we've talked a long time, so we haven't covered many of these. No, but we've got next week because I've got five more of these, and then we can do a couple on these. more of these. And about the 20,000 words a day. In 12,000 words yeah. a day. Well, statistically, they say women have 20,000 words a day. You say I have... 20,000 words a minute with gust up to 50,000. But <laughs> men have 12,000. And I think that's generous. Huh? I think that's generous. I don't think men talk 12,000 words a day. Well, I... I Mm-mm. No, not unless we not have most, to. Not, well, some men are more talkers than others. I'm thinking about Jesse Rivera. That's why we come home from work and we're quiet. We're out of words. You ran out of words. And we need a nap to get some more words. Get some more so, words to make so. it through the night. Yes. Yeah. How about uh, this one? It's one of my favorites. If you want to end on it, we can. I was thinking Debbie and Richard are watching. You, it said you had five or six inches of snow. Do you still have it in Oklahoma? Mm-hmm. And which are you? Which is which is Richard? Which is Debbie? Um, here's one. Turned on by touch, women. Turned on by sight, men. Men are so sight-driven. Women are touch-driven. We want you to touch us, and that really connects us to you. And that kind of ties with uh, men uh, show I love you generally, and women say I love you. And, And to show you love me, does not take the place well, when I need to hear I love you. That's that's true, but then you also have to understand what you learned from me. A love language was I give to right. you. You're actually well, I'll service. do things for you, and, but it doesn't that doesn't mean it takes the place of the verbiage of I, I love, love you. you. That's true. But you understand that that's an act of love. What I'm doing. Absolutely, your love language is acts of service, and so I know when you want to say I love you, you'll do something for me. You'll or you'll bring me a gift, or you'll go pick roses and bring them in, or you. Those are all I love yous from you. But you've also learned, regardless of all those acts of service, I still need to hear it. That's so, right. so that's we're in good. Right. Let me see what everybody's saying here. Jeanette says, "I love to shop too. Shopping is an avenue of relief, even if I do more looking than buying. Sometimes that's just stepping out." She said, "Mark is a saver, and I'm thankful for his gift of saving. And I am the giver, also saver." Some women, I won't say this, but no, let me put this. I will say this. Some people think shopping is a sport. I mean, they really do. I mean, that's not for me, for no, sure. No, I mean, they do. It's just like something they just go out and do all the time. And, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, especially with this COVID going on, that I was reading an article that, that two people have been spending so much time together, they never spent that much time together because they have professional jobs, and, mm-hmm. and they were just, you know, like on each other's nerves. Yeah, and, that makes and, sense. But, you know, uh, people can't get out. But... Um, you find another way. I mean, we've done most of our Christmas shopping on, on the computer now, haven't we? Oh, almost, almost 99% of it. Mm-hmm. Um, this year particularly. And uh, Pamela said, just so you know, she said, Honey, I used to have 215 tabs open at any given time on her computer. <laughs> 
boom, 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 boom. You got a, that is something else. You got a lot of things open. She uh, said she's a computer for sure. I, I would, Working the problems. I, I would not even. Working the problems. I wouldn't even know where to begin. With the, I Multiple tabs. I wouldn't even know where to begin. And Kevin's going to win. Uh, Kevin and Rhonda Horde. Kevin shows, touches, and says, I love you. Yay, That's Kevin. That's the trifecta right there. Woo! That we is so it good. Right there. That is so good. Uh, she, uh, Debbie says, when Richard is done talking, he takes his hearing aids out. <laughs> So funny. You I know, love it. You know, there's something said to be there, said there about losing your about. hearing that <laughs> keeps marriages strong in their latter days. I used to say that, actually. We used to say that about a friend of ours. Say, yeah. yeah. Boy, he sure loves her. No, he can't hear her. I said, thank God he can't hear her. Because if he could hear her, he might not love her so much. Oh, uh, Debbie said that we still have snow. The kids had a snow day today and no schools. They made angels in the snow, a snowman, and a snowball fight. My goodness, wow. Isn't that amazing? And Danielle, Krista, and Spencer are there, too. Uh, what are you in your personalities? And I know you are snowed in, too, uh, there for sure. Absolutely. You want to you wanna end with one more? Mm. Men are providers. No. Where's that? Where's that one there? Men are providers. Women are lovers. Men, women are lovers. Yeah. Men. And 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 that that probably is changing since we first put this together. Mm -hmm. But um, I grew up though that was part of my dad's. He was a provider, and my mom was the lover in the home, and that was the way it was the taught. But but but, mm -hmm. but society is changing it, that. It has. And you married me, and I all I know that I feel good about doing is, is you like to provide. I like to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. I it, it's very self satisfying to me, mm -hmm. and um, and part of that was I guess I was single a while, but also I don't know. It's just in my nature. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, as I've gotten older, instead of wanting to provide as much, I want, you I want value to value time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the book I wrote, not just provider, but participator. So I've right. I've shifted. shifted in that. You definitely. So yeah. So maybe that's one of the things we can say about or celebrating each other's differences is as we stay together, we do. I I don't. I don't dislike his differences. I celebrate them. And as we've been together for 35 years, I've become much of them. We'd say that about Franklin and Cherry in their church. They, they just love people. But the mm. most loving, loving, loving people we've ever met, uh, Sherry towards and Franklin. Their, towards, their, towards their congregation. They're very, very loving. But, it, but many of our friends, I mean, absolutely, that, that, that walk with the Lord are wonderful. Yeah, Ron, Rhonda says Kevin is ooey gooey mushy, and he always has been. Wow. Well, how blessed are you? That is awesome. Brandon's awesome at showing affection. I say it, but good improve uh, in the show the showing department. I could improve in the showing department. Well, you know, we all need to work on all of that, don't we? Uh, we need to show it and say it. I love you, but I also need to do acts of service since that's your love language. If I don't show you that I love you by what I do, then you won't know it, no matter how much I say. And just remember, cooking a dinner is different than burning a dinner. I didn't burn this one, thank I'm God. Just kidding. I burned a bunch. That's I'm for just sure. Kidding. Oh, like, just Jennifer, kidding. Jennifer says in Michigan we don't have snow days in Michigan anymore because of virtual school. Uh -huh. But today Google glitched and the kids had a Google day off. I, I how saw about that? that? Yeah. So uh, Sarah Kokenar says, we're in Michigan and we're waiting for the big snow. Well, Oklahoma definitely got it. That is for sure. We, uh, I'm we're just cool weather out here. It's, it's un unseasonally cool. It's nice, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool at night, which is great. And mm -hmm. then the sun's out and mm -hmm. nice in the daytime. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, one last question since we're getting close on time. Does anyone have any questions? And do you like this topic? Would you like for us to continue it next week? Um, uh, we love talking about these differences because what we've learned in life is that we'll, if we s celebrate each other, uh, we learn to appreciate somebody who's not just like us. And we, we stop trying to change people. We started off in the beginning of this. We started this doing a lot of teaching and all. But as, as the, the last five or six weeks, 
we've had so many people um, on our prayer night ask us to pray for oppression, depression, uh, anxiety, and things of that nature that we've just chosen to lighten up the topics a little bit. Yeah. And um, as we've said, we just continually run Christmas music in our house, right. in our car, and just to try and change the atmosphere because it just seems like there's a heaviness out there mm -hmm. in, in the world today. And we understand people are going through so many things and people are being diagnosed and and there's people that are not making it out of the hospitals and things of that nature. But, um, you know, uh, we're just trying to do laughter does good like a... Does good like a medicine. A medicine. And if you're saying what you're listening to, my new NRN CD is amazing. If you haven't ordered it, it's a great Christmas stocking stuffer. Uh, you can download it. The free download is inside the CD if you prefer having the actual CD. Or you can just download straight from the website and we have tons of new jewelry on the website and we have a beautiful uh, passion translation bible all of our books if you've never read to becoming one you're gonna love it you should get it it has tons of differences and how to walk as one and then our second marriage book don't kill each other let god do it both of these are really great marriage books on walking in agreement and walking as one mm -hmm. so so, is that any last ones there? And we'll wrap it up. All right, let me see. Then we'll see questions. you Thursday night for um, uh, Night of Prayer. And then um, following week, this would be the Monday before. When is Christmas? Two uh, weeks? Two weeks? Lynette Rogers said, Thank you while you are preparing me to be a wife. And that's what I've said to a lot of the young ladies and young men that are watching. We are trying to help you do preventative medicine, almost like pre marriage counseling here. Um, the no, last, we're not counselors. But we're not counselors. No. Uh, Jennifer said, Tim expresses his love much better than I do. Well, he's an extrovert. So we, uh, if you're an introvert, you definitely have to work on that for sure. Ruth says, thank you both for Marriage Mondays. It's actually Tuesday a.m. there. And there's definitely no snow, <laughs> she said. <laughs> we are so appreciative of you and we love you all. And we just pray that the Lord be with you and laugh a lot. Keep safe. Keep safe. That's right. I'll see you in the morning for our John chapter 2. We're in the book of John's. Just started today. Really, really great uh, Bible study every morning at California time, 9 a.m. If you want to join us or you can watch it later on in the day. See you later.